Brian Hollins and Greg Anthony. I guess the three-piece part of the uh, ensemble. Tonight. Yeah, we're going to rock it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Hornets and your two-time defending champion Golden State Warriors will take the court at 8.30 right here on NBA TV. The Warriors can clinch the Pacific Division with a win or a Clippers loss. Let's take a look back at the Warriors' last loss on Friday night. Now, KD is fouled, and it looks like an and one with four seconds to go. And that's your game, right? Not so much. The basket called off. Is that, is that a good call, GA? Looks like he got it off. Yeah, got it, it's always tougher to tell in slow motion, uh, but that's a tough break for the Warriors, but Curry still delivered. So now we have a tie game, 130-130. Timberwolves trying to get the game-winning bucket. Ryan, foul here? Yeah, that, that's absolutely a foul. You see KD's arms wrapped around a uh, cat as he goes to the rim and he impedes his progress right there. Now, GA, normally in these situations, the referees want to try as best to allow the players to decide the game, but you saw two hands wrapped around them and then obviously the fussing and moaning to the referee. So now they're extra sensitive to anything that happens. Well, looking at those Western Conference standings, the Warriors lose the opportunity to get a game on the Golden State Nuggets. They have the same exact record right now. Steph Curry believes his team had a battle with the referees on Friday night. Which is the worst call in your opinion? Uh, you have to ask the MVP of tonight, Mark Cohen. Is it the most frustrating ending you've seen to a game that you've been a part of? Probably not, but it's the one that has just happened, so I'm still a little, a little heated. Did, did, did you feel at all? I mean, because you guys kind of taunted the referees after you hit the three. Did you feel at all that played into what was a, that controversial call? Right? If that's the case, that's indicative of the entire game and you know, not officiating the game itself and letting the emotions get in the way or whatever kind of agenda you had coming in. I mean, at the end of the day, it's 182. You're not going to get overblown that, that much. We should have been you know, way ahead in the second half by playing better, but. Again, let the, let the game decide, and, and that's, that's just unfortunate. At that point, do they provide like, any explanation on things? The fact that Draymond got a tech for saying, oh, we can't talk to y'all tonight, is kind of embarrassing in terms of like, we're supposed to have that communication. Nobody's being demonstrative, disrespectful in any sense. Um, you know, in this league, there's gonna be back and forth and chatter and trying to you know, end emotions high intensity competition. As long as you're not you know, cussing somebody out or being disrespectful, that, that communication should be there. For the most part, all year has been you know, pretty solid. Just on a night to night, it's kind of, you want it to be the most consistent thing in terms of uh, player referee you know, relationships. Some straightforward remarks by Steph Curry there. Still no fines for the Golden State Warriors. Also on the other side of that, the refs, they've been exonerated in the two-minute report for their part in, in that situation. So getting back to what we actually saw in those clips between mm -hmm. the Timberwolves and the Warriors, is that just the way it should be? That both sides should be, okay, Warriors, you said what you had to say, and the refs, you know what? You did what, your job properly. What's really tough from the NBA standpoint they have to protect the referees because if we want to complain about every foul, every something, and there was no fines, and I, and I hate to say this as a former player that there should be fines, we would never stop talking yes. GA. And when you get hit with that 25 racks in your pocket and you got it like that to, to, to go ahead and spin, you think twice about making remarks. Now, obviously, if you're the Warriors and I look at their situation, they got to find something that motivates them. They have to be excited about basketball. So if the referees are the bad guy, somebody on the other side is the bad guy, like it's about time. But they're, they're kind of almost searching for something because this never should have came down to the last shot against the Timberwolves. I, I think that's your point. And I think big picture, Steve Kerr and this Warriors team understand ultimately – they lost the game. The yep. officials didn't take it from them. It should not have gotten to the yeah. point. I mean, that's a game where Carl Anthony Towns, you know, 5 of 17 from the field, but their bench was really solid for them, and, and they found a way to win the game. The last call, like the, the questionable one to me was the Durant play um, because, again, I didn't get to hear where the call was made in terms of the official with the whistle and what have you. The last play against Durant, that's an easy one because it's also the mm. play – that's being focused on because that's where the ball's going. Like, you get away with some grabbing and yep. tussling on those last plays 
when you're setting screens or coming through. But when the ball's in the air and it's coming to you and you grab a guy, that's a hard one to not call if you're the I official. think with that Durant one, it's, it's, there's a fine line because you know at the end of the game, and it was interesting, I was on the other side of this in Dallas, and we tell the referee, we're going to foul at the end of the game, okay? They inbound the ball to Carmelo. Uh, Antoine Wright runs over and grabs Carmelo. Referee doesn't blow the whistle. Carmelo shoots the ball, knocks down a three-point shot. We end up going down 2-0 or 3-1 or whatever in the series, and that ended our chances. So now when they go out and alert the referee, I almost appreciate in the sense where he calls the foul and say, hey, guys, we're taking a foul, and the referees know what's about to happen. Yeah, and even watching that replay yep. there, I did get a sense that there should have been some continuation because he's, he's in his shooting shoot motion. Yeah. It wasn't a swing through. He was catching in his motion going up. Now, the problem is the official, in essence, was immediately saying no shot. And he, 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 he could have been making the call uh, kind of almost preemptively, thinking that the foul is coming before yeah. it actually was committed. So how much of that is it the Warriors' body language? You saw Draymond Green because what Steph said, Draymond said to the referees, didn't seem flagrant and warrant a technical. But when you watch the video clip of the way Draymond looks and the way that he seems like his body language is, that would warrant a tech. Here's the reality. Referees watch film just like players yes. do. You have tendencies and habits mm. that we play against and we scout guys, and these referees have to scout and do their homework for players the exact same way. So if I know that Draymond Green is a guy, if I don't check him early, he could fly off the handles, yeah. the game could get out of tone. I'm going to be right on top of that as a referee. So unfortunately, your, your reputation precedes you. G.A., yeah. I, I fouled a number of guys. There were times <laughs> when I, I would slide over and go, foul, <laughs> foul. They'd be calling foul. But these referees know who you are before yeah. it even gets there. The moniker, greatest shooter of all time. We get to witness Steph Curry. He's, he's holding on to that, but this might be his best shooting season. It might be one of his best shooting stretches of his career. Five straight games, uh, seven straight games with five or more three-pointers made. He's shooting 12 a game, GA, <laughs> making five a game on the season. That's the best of his career. Well, yeah, you know what I'd say in the offseason if I'm Steve Kerr? I'd be like, you need to shoot 15 a game next year. Because when you're oh. shooting 40% from three, four, and in his case, 43, and you're knocking down over five, I think you're going to see him even the next year take even more three-pointers because of how efficient he is from beyond. His ability to play without the basketball, to me, at the point guard position, is by far the best in the game. Uh, their collective basketball IQ, still very high. Having said all that, the one concern you have is just like we saw against the Timberwolves team, they gave up 131 points in that game. And so while they can still get things done offensively, when we get ready for the postseason, they're going to have to flip that proverbial switch in terms of getting better defensively. And I do think they will be better defensively. The question is, though, has the gap between them and the rest of that Western Conference, has, has it closed? Will they still be head and shoulders above everybody else? And that's what we're going to find out come mid-April. I mean, has that gap closed? I think the gap with the entire league has somewhat caught up. I remember when the Warriors just kind of blew up and became the Warriors. We were competing against them. We didn't know what was happening. We would have to start small forwards at power forward. We go into the small ball lineups, and you would literally get run out of the gym. And slowly but surely, the entire league, I don't want to say has caught up, but the ground has been, been made. You got guys that shoot threes. Small ball lineups are in place. Now center shoot threes to match yeah. up. There's multiple ball handers on the floor, but just rotationally, you didn't, you didn't have that, G.A. Brian, think of it. You, you came in. Who's the best big on the team you played on that you played for an extended period of time? Kevin Garnett. Kevin uh, Garnett in his prime, right? Yep. yep. So Not in his prime, not, but, but later. But, but, but you, you take a guy like that, and the analogy I would use, when Ryan first probably went up and played against a guy of that, that caliber, early on, he, he probably was giving it to you a little bit because yeah. you had. But what happens over time, you get more and more comfortable playing against him. You yeah. learn tendencies. You improve. And so your confidence grows. And I think that's what mm. you're seeing with the rest of the league is, like, to Ryan's point, they were in awe of Golden State because we hadn't seen it. Yep. Now you're starting to see a lot of teams play a similar style and them just maybe not being quite as good. Their best players are every bit as good, but they're not as deep as they've been in years past. And now the confidence from other teams – has grown. Also, real quick, to, when you play a small ball defensively 
it takes a lot of multiple efforts mm -hmm. that when you have these long championship runs year after year, that's tough to keep up. Warriors defense going to have to keep up with Kimball Walker and a Charlotte Hornets team trying hard to stay in that race in the Eastern Conference. You see it there, five teams fighting for three playoff spots. The Hornets two and a half games out of that final spot with seven games to play. Four of their teams that they face, including your two-time defending champion, the Golden State Warriors, are in the playoffs right now. And in the Orlando Magic, that's who they have in their finale. Is that just too tough of a road ahead for Charlotte to make the playoffs? Well, the word you use is the problem, road. They got 11 road wins on the season. And, and, and to me, that is the real issue for this team. Yeah. They still got to play five more road games. And they're in Golden State. And, and they got a tough Man. one tonight. And I think <laughs> when you look back on the season – and what's disappointing about it is the fact that they weren't more competitive on the road. 11 road wins out of 36 to this point. Really, that's why they're on the outside looking in right now. When I look at that Charlotte squad, there's such a dependency on Kimball Walker to make something out of control happen. It's, it's a 50 ball, it's a 40 ball, and they need that night in and night out. And the one thing you hang your hat on when you have these off-shooting nights that they don't have is defense. Defensively, they're a poor defensive squad. They don't have anybody anchoring down the middle. They don't have the, the same pride there. Obviously, Kimball Walker, I'm not asking for much out of him, but you got to have guys on the back line that come up every night and protect him. And that's really the stability that you get within the NBA season that you're not seeing in Charlotte. Certainly, Kimball Walker, an exciting guard. We're going to see tonight against another exciting guard, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Um, one that was in play earlier today. How about the rookie? For the game. Oh, Trey Tastic indeed. That's up next. <laughs> oh, man.